knew as a watershed council that we had a major opportunity here to get critical species and threatened fish species up to the headwaters. You can do upland work, you can do you know, riparian work, but if the fish aren't able to access the habitat, it doesn't do any good. The main stem barriers were really you know, the first things that needed to be addressed. And so we identified the Brownsville Dam, the Sodom Dam, and the Shear Dam as high priorities for the Watershed Council to begin working on. It takes the right combination of skills and people coming together to see projects like this happen. This dam removal and this fish passage effort is so much more than the concrete removal and the logs that have been placed. Finally, the fish can get to our cool headwater habitat. And even with the small dam removal, we're opening up a significant amount of migration um, to all native fish species, not just the salmon, throughout this basin. We have to learn the lessons from these to take forward because there are literally thousands of dams in the state of Oregon in this size range that are going to need to be repaired, removed, or retrofitted. As people become more comfortable and more confident in how rivers respond, I think more dams are going to continue to come out. It's a real symbol of the Watershed Council movement in Oregon, that it's about the people, it's about the stakeholders, and the landowners coming together for consensus decision around really complex water resources issues. <laughs>